This tutorial is going to provide an overview of degree of freedom analysis. So we will provide an explanation of what this means and how it can be used to help us analyze engineering problems. So when we are doing a degree of freedom analysis, we are basically trying to find out whether we have enough or too much information to solve a particular problem. So before we look at an engineering example of doing a degree of freedom analysis, we can kind of get an intuitive sense of what degree of freedom analysis means by looking at a couple of system of algebraic expressions. So we look at three different scenarios. In the first, uh, we have one equation. We have 2x plus y is equal to 7. And if we were asked to solve this problem, we know that we can because we only have one equation with two unknowns. So we could rearrange this uh, however we want to solve for x or y but we will never be able to solve for both of these uh, variables. So in this case, when we have the number of the unknowns is greater than the number of the equations, we have an under-specified system we can solve it. That is not the case in our second scenario where we have two unknowns, x and y, again, and two equations. In this case, the number of unknowns is equal to the number of the equation, and this is generally the scenario that we are looking to uh, uh, analyze the engineering problems. In this case, when the number of unknowns are equal to the number of the equations, we have a zero degree of uh, freedom and we can solve the system of equations. So if we solve the problem in this case, uh, we can find out x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. In our, our third scenario, we still have our two unknowns of x and y, but uh, here we have three equations. So we have a different scenario, scenario where the number of unknowns is actually less than the number of equations. And in this case, we are over-specified. If we have an over-specified system, we can get results or answer for all unknowns that are inconsistent. So for example, if we use the first two equations to solve for x and y, as we previously did, we show that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. If we use the second two equations, we would get a different answer for x and y. So here x is equal to 0.5 and y is equal to 3.5. So we have a system of equations that aren't consistent with each other and aren't generating a single unique solution. So when we are analyzing engineering problems, we are trying to find a system that has zero degrees of freedom and provides enough information so that can be solved for the unknowns for a particular problem. If we are trying to solve an engineering problem and we are interested in analyzing or modeling chemical processes, doing a degree of freedom analysis is going to be one of the first thing we want to do and we can calculate the degree of freedom by calculating the number of unknowns for a particular system and subtracting the number of the independent balances that we can write whether it's mass or energy and subtracting the other equation that we can write that relate those equations. I'm going to focus on the material balance side of this and if you want to look at the uh, number of the independent balances we can write, it's always going to be equal to the number of uh, components that are present in that particular system. 
and we can always write an independent balance for each species that's present. We can also write a total balance, but the total balance is not independent from the component balance. In other words, if we sum up all the component balances that are present, that will generate the overall balance. So it's dependent on all the component balances. The other equation can come from the variety of different places. So for example, we might have process specifications. So we might know the relationship or the ratio between the different flow rates in a particular part of the problem. We also could have physical properties data. So for example, we might know the density or a specific gravity of a liquid stream or we might know the pressure and temperature of a gas stream which would allow us to use the ideal gas law to figure out the flow rate could also use equilibrium equation so there is a lot of different equations that are different than mass balances that will allow us to relate unknowns and we can account for those as well When we calculate the degrees of freedom for a particular system, there is three potential outcomes. If we have a situation where degrees of freedom are equal to zero, then we can solve the problem. We have the necessary equation to relate the unknowns that we have. On the other hand, if we have degree of freedom that's greater than zero, we have more unknowns than we have equation and we have an underspecified system. So without more information, we can solve for all the unknown. And, we have, and if we have degrees of freedom that is less than zero, we are overspecified. In other words, we have more equation than we do unknown, similar to what I was uh, showing earlier to you. So let's apply this to two different examples of material balance on single units. In the first example, we have a single unit process with two inputs and two outputs. If we want to calculate degrees of freedom, we need to know the number of unknowns as well as the number of balances that we can write for this problem. If we take a look at our flow charts, here we can see that we have one unknown flow rate here on the input side and also have another unknown composition variable on the output side and one more unknown flow rate here P. So with F, X and P we have three unknowns. If we want to solve for these three unknowns, we can write out a system of mass balances and the number of the independent balances is always equal to the number of components. So we have component A, we have component B, and we have component C. So in this case, there are three independent material balances that we can write and again keep in mind that we can also write the total mass balance equation for this unit. So the total mass balance equation will always be equal to the sum of the three component balances. So therefore it is not independent from the, the other three. We don't have any other information that's given to us that can uh, relay the variables in this particular example. So with three unknowns and three balances that we can write, we have, degree, uh, we have zero degrees of freedom and we can solve for the three unknowns in this case. Now let's look at the second example of a single unit with one input and two outputs. Again, we want to do the degrees of freedom analysis. 
we need to know the number of unknowns and so in this case we have two unknown composition variables on the input side and we have an unknown flow rate on the output side as well as another unknown composition variable and one more unknown flow rate so it looks like we have a to total of five unknowns in this particular case the number of the independent material balance is always limited to the number of the components that we have and like the first example we have three a b and c so with only three balances that we can write down and five unknowns we have two degrees of freedom and we will have an ununderspecified system however we have some more information that we can use on the right hand side we can see that we have an equation that relates two of the flow rates here we have the T and P which P equals not point time not point one times T so it's not a material balance equation but in this equation that relates two variables and our and our independent from all the balances we could write down one equation so we have minus one other equation for this particular ratio that leave us with one degrees of freedom left if we look at the input side we can show on one more relation that relates these variables so we know that the sum of all the mass fractions has to the equal one so we have one more variable on the flow chart that we can we need we could uh, write down y is equal to 1 minus 0 0.2 which is the mole fraction of a minus x which is the mole fraction of b so often it's disadvantage to write the composition variables on the flow chart with as few variables as possible. That's actually what has been done here in the second flow rate. So if we keep this con constraint in mind that all the mole fraction to sum up to 1, then we have another equation that we can write as we just did. And that leave us with zero degree of freedom in this case as well. So we could solve for all the five variables in this example as well. So hopefully this shows that through these two examples, the degree of freedom analysis is a really powerful tool to quickly help us determine whether we have enough information to solve a problem it's straightforward on a simple unit it becomes even more important as we look at more complex processes with multiple units so it's often a good place to start with degree of freedom analysis for the different systems in a particular problem and thank you for watching